Dedication, Prelude, Prologue, and Scene 1 of Faust. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Faust, Part 1, by Johann Wolfgang von Goethe. Translated by Bayard Taylor. Dedication. Again ye come, ye hovering forms. I find ye as early to my clouded sight ye shone. Shall I attempt this once to seize and bind ye? Still, O oh, my heart, is that illusion thrown? Ye crowd more near. Then be the rain assigned ye, and sway me from your misty shadowy zone. My bosom thrills with youthful passion shaken, for a magic airs that round your march awaken. Of joyous days ye bring the blissful vision, the dear familiar phantoms rise again, and, like an old and half-extinct tradition, first love returns with friendship in his train. Renewed is pain, with mournful repetition, life tracks his devious labyrinthine chain, and names the good whose cheating fortune tore them from happy hours, and left me to deplore them. They hear no longer these succeeding measures, the souls to whom my earliest songs I sang, Dispersed the friendly troop with all its pleasures, And still, alas, the echoes first that rang. I bring the unknown multitude my treasures, Their very plaudits give my heart a pang. And those beside, whose joy my song is flattered, If still they live, wide through the world are scattered. And grasps me now a long, unwanted yearning For that serene and solemn spirit-land, my song to faint Aeolian murmurs turning, Sways like a harp-string by the breezes fanned. I thrill and tremble, tear on tear is burning, And the stern heart is tenderly unmanned. What I possess I see far distant lying, And what I lost grows real and undying. Prelude at the Theatre You two, who oft a helping hand have lent, in need and tribulation. Come, let me know your expectation of this our enterprise in German land. I wish the crowd to feel itself well treated, especially since it lives and lets me live. The posts are set, the booth of boards completed, and each awaits the banquet I shall give. Already there, with curious eyebrows raised, they sit sedate, and hope to be amazed. I know how, one, the people's taste may flatter, yet here a huge embarrassment I feel. What they're accustomed to is no great matter, but then, alas, they've read an awful deal. How shall we plan that all be fresh and new, important matter, yet attractive too? For tis my pleasure to behold them surging, when to our booth the current sets apace, and with Tremendous oft-repeated urging squeeze onward through the narrow gate of grace. By daylight, even, they push and cram in to reach the cellar's box, a fighting host, and, as for bread around a baker's door in famine, to get a ticket break their necks almost. This miracle alone can work the poet on men so various. Now, my friend, pray show it. Speak not to me of yonder motley masses, Whom but to see puts out the fire of song. Hide from my view the surging crowd that passes, And in its whirlpool forces us along. No, lead me where some heavenly silence glasses, The purer joys that round the poet throng, Where love and friendship still divinely fashion The bonds that bless, the wreaths that crown his passion. Ah, every utterance from the depths of feeling The timid lips have stammeringly expressed, Now failing, now perchance success revealing, Gulps the wild moment in its greedy breast. Or oft reluctant years its warrant sealing, Its perfect stature stands at last confessed. What dazzles for the moment spends its spirit, What's genuine shall posterity inherit. Posterity? Don't name the word to me. If I should choose to preach posterity, where would you get contemporary fun? That men will have it, there's no blinking. A fine young fellow's presence, to my thinking, is something worth to every one, who genially his nature cannot pour, takes from the people's moods no irritation. The wider circle he acquires, the more securely works his inspiration. 
Then pluck apart, and give us sterling coin. Let fancy be with her attendants fitted. Sense, reason, sentiment, and passion join. But have a care, lest folly be omitted. Chiefly, enough of incident prepare. They come to look, and they prefer to stare. Reel off a host of threads before their faces, so that they gape in stupid wonder. Then, by sheer diffuseness, you have won their graces, and are at once most popular of men. Only by mass you touch the mass, for any will finally himself his bit select. Who offers much brings something unto many, and each goes home content with the effect. If you've a piece, why, just in pieces give it. A hash, a stew will bring success, believe it. Tis easily displayed and easy to invent. What use a whole compactly to present? Your hearers pick and pluck as soon as they receive it. You do not feel how such a trade debases, how ill it suits the artist, proud and true. The botching work each fine pretender traces is, I perceive, a principle with you. Such a reproof not in the least offends. A man who some result intends must use the tools that best are fitting. Reflect, soft wood is given to you for splitting. And then observe for whom you write. If one comes bored, exhausted quite, another, satiate, leaves the banquet tapers, and worst of all, full many a white is fresh from reading of the daily papers. Idly to us they come, as to a masquerade, mere curiosity their spirits warming. The ladies, with themselves and with their finery, aid, without a salary, their parts performing. What dreams are yours in high poetic places? You're pleased, forsooth, full houses to behold. Draw near, and view your patrons' faces. The half are coarse, the half are cold. One, when the play is out, goes home to cards. A wild knight on a wench's breast, another chooses. Why should you rack, poor foolish bards, for ends like these? The gracious muses, I tell you, give but more, more, ever more, they ask. Thus shall you hit the mark of gain and glory. Seek to confound your auditory. To satisfy them is a task. What ails you now? Is it suffering or pleasure? Go find yourself a more obedient slave. What shall the poet that which nature gave, the highest right supreme humanity, forfeit so wantonly to swell your treasure? Whence o'er the heart his empire free, the elements of life how conquers he? Is not his heart's accord, urged outward far and dim, to wind the world in unison with him? When on the spindle spun to endless distance, by nature's listless hand the thread is twirled, and the discordant tones of all existence in sullen jangle are together hurled. Who, then, the changeless order of creation, divides and kindles into rhythmic dance? Who brings the one to join the general ordination, where it may throb in grandest consonance? Who bids the storm to passion stir the bosom, in brooding souls the sunset burn above? Who scatters every fairest April blossom along the shining path of love? Who braids the noteless leaves to crowns requiting, desert with fame in actions every field? Who makes Olympus sure the gods uniting, the might of man as in the bard revealed? So these fine forces in conjunction propel the high poetic function, as in a love adventure they might play. You meet by accident. You feel, you stay, and by degrees your heart is tangled. Bliss grows apace, and then its course is jangled. You're ravished quite, then comes a touch of woe, and there's a neat romance, completed ere you know. Let us then such a drama give. Grasp the exhaustless life that all men live. Each shares therein, though few may comprehend, where'er you touch, there's interest without end. In motley pictures little light, much error, and of truth a glimmering might, Thus the best beverage is supplied, whence all the world is cheered and edified. 
Then, at your play, behold the fairest flower of youth collect, to hear the revelation, each tender soul, with sentimental power, sucks melancholy food from your creation, and now in this, now that, the leaven works, and each beholds what in his bosom lurks. They still are moved at once to weeping, or to laughter, still wonder at your flights, enjoy the show they see. A mind once formed is never suited after, one yet in growth will ever grateful be. Then give me back that time of pleasures. While yet in joyous growth I sang, When, like a fount, the crowding measures Uninterrupted gushed and sprang. Then bright mist veiled the world before me, In opening buds a marvel woke, As I the thousand blossoms broke Which every valley richly bore me. I nothing had and yet enough for youth, Joy in illusion, ardent thirst for truth, Give unrestrained the old emotion, the bliss that touched the verge of pain, the strength of hate, love's deep devotion. Oh, give me back my youth again. Youth, good my friend, you certainly require. When foes in combat sorely press you, when lovely maids in fond desire hang on your bosom and caress you. When from the hard-worn gold a wreath beckons afar, the race awaiting. When after dancing out your breath you pass the night in dissipating. But the familiar harp with soul to play, with grace and bold expression, and towards a self-erected goal, to walk with many a sweet digression. This, aged sirs, belongs to you, and we no less revere you for that reason. Age childish makes, they say, but tis not true. We're only genuine children still, in age's season. The words you've bandied are sufficient. Tis deeds that I prefer to see. In compliments you're both proficient, but might the while more useful be. What's need to talk of inspiration? Tis no companion of delay. If poetry be your vocation, let poetry your will obey. Full well you know what here is wanting. The crowd for strongest drink is panting, and such forthwith I'd have you brew. What's left undone to-day, to-morrow will not do. Waste not a day in vain digression. With resolute, courageous trust, Seize every possible impression, And make it firmly your possession. You'll then work on, because you must. Upon our German stage, you know it, Each tries his hand at what he will. So take of traps and scenes your fill, And all you find be sure to show it. Use both the great and lesser heavenly light. Squander the stars in any number, Beasts, birds, trees, rocks, and all such lumber, Fire, water, darkness, day and night. Thus in our booth's contracted sphere The circle of creation will appear and move as we deliberately impel from heaven across the world to hell. Prologue in Heaven The three archangels come forward. The sun orb sings in emulation, mid brother spheres his ancient frown. His path predestined through creation, he ends with the step of thunder sound. The angels from his vigid splendid draw power whose measure none can say. The lofty works uncomprehended are bright as on the earliest day. And swift, and swift beyond conceiving, the splendor of the world goes round, day's Eden brightness still relieving the awful night's intense profound. The ocean tides in foam are breaking against the rock's deep bases hurled, and both, the spheric race partaking, eternal, swift, are onward whirled. And rival storms abroad are surging, From sea to land, from land to sea, A chain of deepest action, Forging round all in wrathful energy. There flames a desolation, Blazing before the thunder's crashing way. Yet, Lord, thy messengers are praising The gentle movement of thy day. Though still by them uncomprehended, from these the angels draw their power, And all thy works, sublime and splendid, Are bright as in creation's hour. Since thou, O Lord, deign'st to approach again, 
and ask us how we do in manner kindest, and heretofore to meet myself with fame among thy menials now my face thou findest. Pardon, this troop I cannot follow after, with lofty speech, though by them scorned and spurned, my pathos certainly would move thy laughter, if thou hadst not all merriment unlearned. Of suns and walls I have nothing to be quoted, how men torment themselves is all I have noted. The little god of the wall sticks to the same old way, and is as whimsical as on creation's day. Life somewhat better might content him, but for the gleam of heavenly light which thou hast lent him. He calls it reason, thence his power is increased, to be far beastlier than any beast. Saving thy gracious presence, he to me, a long-legged grasshopper, appears to be, that springing flies and flying springs, and in the grass the same old ditty sings. Would he still lay among the grass he grows in? Each bit of dung he seeks to stick his nose in. Hast thou then nothing more to mention? Comest ever thus with ill intention? Finds nothing right on earth eternally? No, Lord, I find things there still bad as they can be. Man's misery even to pity moves my nature. I have scars the heart to plague the wretched creature. Knowst Faust? The doctor Faust. My servant, he. Forsooth, he serves you after strange devices, no earthly meat or drink the full suffices. His spirit is firm and fierce pirate, half conscious of his frenzied crazed unrest. The fairest stars from heaven he required, from art the highest raptures and the best, and all the near and far that he desired fails to subdue the tumult of his breast. Though still confused his service unto me, I soon shall lead him to a clearer morning. Sees not the gardener, even while buds his tree, both flower and fruit the future years adorning? What will you bet? There is still a chance to gain him, if unto me full leave you give, gently upon my road to train him. As long as he on earth shall live, so long I make no prohibition. While man's desires and aspirations stir, he cannot choose but err. My thanks. I find the dead no acquisition, and never care to have them in my keeping. I much prefer the chicks where ruddy blood is leaping. And when a corpse approaches close my house, it goes with me as with the cap, the mouse. Enough! What thou hast asked is granted. Turn off this spirit from his fountainhead. To trap him let thy snares be planted, and him with thee be downward led. Then stand abashed when thou art forced to say, A good man, through obscurest aspiration, Has still an instinct of the one true way. Agreed, but it is a short probation. About my bet I feel no trepidation. If I fulfill my expectation, He will let me triumph with a swelling breast. Dust shall he eat, and with a chest as did a certain snake, my near relation. Therein thou art free according to thy merits, the like of thee have never moved my hate. Of all the bold denying spirits, the waggish knave least trouble doth create. Man's active nature flagging seats too soon the level, unqualified repose he learns to crave. Whence willingly the comrade him I gave, Who works, excites, and must create as devil. But ye gods, sons in love and duty, Enjoy the rich, the everlasting beauty. Creative power.
power that works eternal schemes, clasp you in bonds of love, relaxing never, and what in wavering apparition gleams, fixed in its place with thoughts that stand forever. Heaven closes. The archangels separate. Solus. I like at times to hear the ancient's word, and have a care to be most civil. It is really kind of such a noble lord, so humanly to gossip with the devil. First part of the tragedy. One. Night. A lofty-arched, narrow, gothic chamber. Faust, in a chair at his desk, restless. I have studied now philosophy, and jurisprudence, medicine, and even, alas, theology, from end to end with labor keen, and here, poor fool, with all my lore, I stand no wiser than before. I'm magister, yea, doctor height, and straight or crosswise, wrong or right, these ten years long, with many woes, I've led my scholars by the nose, and see that nothing can be known. That knowledge cuts me to the bone. I'm cleverer, true, than those fops of teachers, doctors and magisters, scribes and preachers. Neither scruples nor doubts come now to smite me, nor hell nor devil can longer affright me. For this all pleasure am I foregoing. I do not pretend to aught worth knowing. I do not pretend I could be a teacher to help or convert a fellow creature. Then, too, I've neither lands nor gold, nor the world's least pomp or honor hold. No dog would endure such a cursed existence. Wherefore, from magic I seek assistance, that many a secret perchance I reach through spirit power and spirit speech, and thus the bitter task forego of saying things I do not know, that I may detect the inmost force which binds the world and guides its course, its germs, productive powers explore, and rummage in empty words no more. O oh, full and splendid moon, whom I have from this desk seen climb the sky so many a midnight, would thy glow for the last time beheld my woe. Ever thine eye, most mournful friend, o'er books and papers saw me bend. But would that I on mountains grand amid thy blessed light could stand, with spirits through mountain caverns hover, float in thy twilight the meadows over, and freed from the fumes of lore that swathe me, to health in thy dewy fountains bathe me. Ah, oh, me! This dungeon still I see, this drear accursed masonry, where even the welcome daylight strains but duskly through the painted panes, hemmed in by many a toppling heap of books, worm-eaten, gray with dust, which to the vaulted ceiling creep against the smoky paper thrust, with glasses, boxes round me stacked, and instruments together hurled, ancestral lumber stuffed and packed, such is my world, and what a world! And do I ask wherefore my heart falters, oppressed with unknown needs? Why some inexplicable smart all movement of my life impedes? Alas, in living nature's stead, where God his human creatures set, in smoke and mould the fleshless dead and bones of beasts around me yet. Fly! up and seek the broad free land and this one book of mystery from nostradamus's very hand is it not sufficient company when i the starry courses know and nature's wise instruction seek with light of power my soul shall glow as when to spirits spirits speak tis vain this empty brooding here though guessed the holy symbols be you spirits come you hover near. Oh, if you hear me, answer me. He opens the book and perceives the sign of the macrocosm. Ha! Huh, what a sudden rapture leaps from this I view, through all my senses swiftly flowing. 
I feel a youthful, holy, vital bliss in every vein and fibre newly glowing. Was it a god who traced this sign with calm across my tumult stealing, my troubled heart to joy unsealing with impulse mystic and divine, the powers of nature here around my path revealing? Am I a god? So clear mine eyes, in these pure features I behold creative nature to my soul unfold. What says the sage? Now first I recognize. The spirit world, no closures fasten, thy sense is shut, thy heart is dead. Disciple up, untiring, hasten to bathe thy breast in morning red. He contemplates the sign. How each the whole its substance gives, each in the other works and lives, like heavenly forces rising and descending, their golden urns reciprocally lending, with wings that winnow blessing, from heaven through earth I see them pressing, filling the all with harmony unceasing. How grand a show! But ah, a show alone! Thee, boundless nature, how make thee my own! Where you, you beast, founts of all being shining, Whereon hang heaven's and earth's desire, Where to our withered hearts aspire, You flow, you feed, and am I vainly pining? He turns the leaves impatiently, And perceives the sign of the earth spirit. How otherwise upon me works this sign? Thou, spirit of the earth, art nearer, even now my powers are loftier, clearer. I glow as drunk with new-made wine. New strength and heart to meet the world incite me. The woe of earth, the bliss of earth invite me. And though the shock of storms may smite me, no crash of shipwreck shall have power to fright me. Clouds gather over me. The moon conceals her light. The lamps extinguished. Mists rise. Red, angry rays are darting around my head. There falls a horror from the vaulted roof and seizes me. I feel thy presence. Spirit, I invoke. Reveal thyself. Ha! In my heart what rending stroke. With new impulsion my senses heave in this convulsion. I feel thee draw my heart. Absorb, exhaust me. Thou must, thou must. And though my life it cost me. He seizes the book and mysteriously pronounces the sign of the spirit. A ruddy flame flashes. The spirit appears in the flame. Who calls me? With averted head. Terrible to see. Me hast thou long with might attracted. Long from my sphere thy food extracted. And now... Woe! I endure not thee. To view me is thine aspiration, my voice to hear, my countenance to see. Thy powerful yearning moveth me. Here am I. What mean perturbation thee superhuman shakes? Thy soul's high calling where? Where is the breast from which itself a world did bear, and shaped and cherished, with such joy expanded, to be our peer with us, the spirits banded? Where art thou, Faust, whose voice has pierced to me, who towards me pressed with all thine energy? He art thou, who my presence breathing, seeing, trembles through all the depths of being, a writhing worm, a terror-stricken form? The form of flame shall I then fear? Yes, I am Faust, I am thy peer. In the tides of life, in action's storm, a fluctuant wave, a shuttle free, birth and the grave, an eternal sea, a weaving, flowing life, all glowing. Thus at time's humming loom, tis my hand prepares the garment of life which the deity wears. Thou, who around the wide world wendest, 
thou busy spirit, how near I feel to thee! Thou art like the spirit which thou comprehendest, not me. Disappears, overwhelmed. Not thee! Whom, then? I, image of the Godhead, not even like thee. A knock. O oh, death! I know it. Tis my famulus. My fairest luck finds no fruition. In all the fullness of my vision, the soulless sneak disturbs me thus. Enter Wagner in dressing gown and nightcap, a lamp in his hand. Faust turns impatiently. Pardon, I heard your declamation. Twas sure an old Greek tragedy you read. In such an art I crave some preparation, since now it stands one in good stead. I've often heard it said a preacher might learn with a comedian for a teacher. Yes, when the priest comedian is by nature, as happily now and then the case may be. Ah, when one studies thus a prison creature, that scarce the world on holidays can see, scarce through a glass by rare occasion, how shall one lead it by persuasion? You'll ne'er attain it, save you know the feeling, save from the soul it rises clear, serene in primal strength, compelling the hearts and minds of all who hear. You sit forever gluing, patching, you cook the scraps from others' fare, and from your heap of ashes hatching a starveling flame you blow it bare. Take children's monkey's gaze admiring, if such your taste, and be content. But ne'er from heart to heart you'll speak inspiring, save your own heart is eloquent. Yet through delivery or to succeed, I feel that I am far behind indeed. Seek thou the honest recompense. Beware a tinkling fool to be. With little art, clear wit and sense suggest their own delivery. And if thou art moved to speak in earnest, what need that after words thou yearnest? Yes, your discourses with their glittering show, where ye for men twist shredded thought like paper, are unrefreshing as the winds that blow the rustling leaves through chill autumnal vapor. Ah, oh God, but art is long, and life alas is fleeting and oft with zeal my critic duties meeting in head and breast there's something wrong how hard it is to compass the assistance whereby one rises to the source and haply ere one travels half the course must the poor devil quit existence is parchment then the holy font before thee a draught wherefrom thy thirst forever slakes no true refreshment can restore thee, save what from thine own soul spontaneous breaks. Pardon, a great delight is granted, when, in the spirit of the ages planted, we mark how, ere our times, a sage has thought, and then how far his work and grandly we have brought. Oh, yes, up to the stars at last, Listen, my friend, the ages that are past are now a book with seven seals protected. What you the spirit of the ages call is nothing but the spirit of you all, wherein the ages are reflected. So oftentimes you miserably mar it. At the first glance who sees it runs away. An awful barrel and a lumber garret, or at the best a punch and judy play, with maxims most pragmatical and hitting, as in the mouths of puppets are befitting. But then the world, the human heart and brain, of these one covets some slight apprehension. Yes, of the kind which men attain. Who dares the child's true name in public mention? The few who thereof something really learned, unwisely frank with hearts that spurned concealing, and to the mob laid bare each thought and feeling, have evermore been crucified and burned. I pray you, friend, tis now the dead of night. Our converse here must be suspended. I would have shared your watches with the light, so that our learned talk might be extended. Tomorrow, though, I'll ask, in Easter leisure, this and the other question, at your pleasure. Most zealously I seek for erudition. 
Much do I know, but to know is all my ambition. Exit. Solus. That brain alone not loses hope, whose choice is to stick in shallow trash forevermore, which digs with eager hand for buried ore, and when it finds an angle-worm rejoices. Dare such a human voice disturb the flow around me here of spirit present fullest? And yet, this once my thanks I owe to thee, of all earth's sons the poorest, dullest. For thou hast torn me from that desperate state which threatens soon to overwhelm my senses. The apparition was so giant great, it dwarfed and withered all my soul's pretenses. I, image of the Godhead, who began deeming eternal truth secure in nearness, ye choirs, have ye begun the sweet, consoling chant, which through the night of death the angels' ministrants sang, God's new covenant repeating? With spices and precious balm we arrayed him, faithful and gracious we tenderly laid him, linen to bind him, cleanly wound we, Ah, when we would find him, Christ no more found we. Christ is ascended, bliss hath invested him, woes that molested him, trials that tested him, gloriously ended. Why, here in dust, entice me with your spell, ye gentle, powerful sounds of heaven? Peel rather there, where tender natures dwell. Your messages I hear, but faith has not been given. The dearest child of faith is miracle. I venture not to soar to yonder regions whence the glad tidings hither float. And yet from childhood up, familiar with the note, to life it now renews my old allegiance. Once heavenly love sent down a burning kiss upon my brow, in Sabbath silence holy, and filled with mystic presage chimed the church bell slowly and prayer dissolved me in a fervent bliss. A sweet, uncomprehended yearning drove forth my feet through woods and meadows free, and while a thousand tears were burning, I felt a world arise for me. These chants, to youth and all its sports appealing, proclaimed the spring's rejoicing holiday. And memory holds me now, with childish feeling, back from the last, the solemn way. Sound on, ye hymns of heaven, so sweet and mild. My tears gush forth, the earth takes back her child. Has he, victoriously, burst from the vaulted grave and all gloriously, now sits exalted? Is he, in glow of birth, rapture created near? Ah, to, to the world of earth, still are we made it here. here. We, his, his aspiring followers, him we miss, weeping, desiring, Master, thy bliss. Christ is the risen, out of corruption's womb. Burst ye the prison, break from your gloom, praising and pleading him, lovingly needing him, brotherly feeding him, preaching and speeding him, blessing succeeding him, thus is the master near, thus is he here. End of section.